Hello everybody, I'm Richard Oldner. Welcome to the channel. Please, before we get going, make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff so you get notified when I do all of this very cool testing. Today we're taking a look at one of my favorite subjects and that is intake runner length. And not on an LS, we're going to do it on an OG tune port small block. That's right. What happens when we run long runners? What happens when we run short runners? What happens when we run something in between? Let's find out. To illustrate the effect of intake manifolds on your power curve, more specifically the change in runner length, what effect the change in runner length has, I'm going to show you a test that I did way back when on a tune port small block Chevy applications. You remember the old L98 stuff and LB9, the 5 liter and the 350 stuff. We actually ran this on a modified 383 so that basically we could get everything out of what those intake designs had offered. There's a full video up that shows all of these intake manifolds. I tested 10 or 12 different versions, including carbureted versions, all the various versions of the aftermarket tune port stuff. So that video is up, but check it out. But I want to show you what happens when we change basically just the runner length here, and you can see what happens. It has a pretty pronounced effect on the power curve. So we'll take a look at our test motor. This was actually a 383, and we'd have a little bit of a difference in the power curves if we tested it on a smaller 350. In fact, on a, on a smaller, milder 350, it would tend to favor the longer runner intake manifolds rather than the shorter versions. This 383 had a good size cam in it. It had aftermarket trick flow heads on it. And the cam timing and the larger displacement tended to push power higher in the RPM range, which tends to favor the shorter runner manifolds. But we can certainly see what happens here when we ran the different various intake manifolds. So this was a 383 Chevy. It had Trick Flow Super 23 heads on it, an inch and three quarter headers. It had an extrude honed, we're starting off with an extrude honed stock lower intake manifold with TPIS big two runners. And the plenum was mildly ported, mostly opened up for the dual 52 millimeter throttle body that we ran on it so that we could get the maximum amount of power out of this combination. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what happened. And before that, I'll go ahead and put the specs of the camshaft up here for the 383. As you can see, pretty good size. It was a hydraulic roller deal and it was a pretty healthy camshaft. This 383 actually made good power as we'll see. So run with our ported tune port lower manifold, the big tube runners, a modified plenum and a bigger throttle body and long tube headers. Our 383 produced 450 horsepower, 449.9. So as close as we could get to 450 and big torque, 533 foot pounds of torque. So you can get an idea how much this modified version of the factory TPI was worth. Here is what it did when we ran basically a bone stock one. You can see the modified version of the tune port was better everywhere than the stock one as we would kind of expect. Peak power was 410 horsepower. Peak torque was right at 500 foot-pounds, 500.5. But the modified version was better everywhere. But even still, even with the modifications, the better flowing lower manifold and better flowing tubes, we had a pretty good power gain. But you can see the shape of the power curve is the same because we didn't change the runner length. It basically improved the power kind of everywhere, but still made almost exactly the same shape curve. Now let's take a look and see what happened when we tried different intake manifolds on our 383. Now that we've taken a look at both our test motor and what happened when we upgraded from the stock tune port setup to the modified version with the ported lower manifold, the guys from Extrudehone, the big tubes, and then the modified factory plenum with the bigger throttle body, let's do an illustration on what happens when we change the runner length. So we're going to go to extremes here, and then we're going to take a look after that of what happens when we go in between these two extremes. So we've got our longest runner version here, which is the factory tune port stuff. This is a modified higher flowing version, but the same runner length. And as we saw compared to the factory one, same curve, basically it wanted to make power at the same part. It just was elevated because it had more flow. But here's what happened, and here's what the change in the power curve. Here's what happens when we put basically the very short runner intake manifold on this combination. And this was a mini RAM from TPIS. And this is a mini RAM version, very, very short runners, probably in the three to three and a half inch range compared to the tune port stuff, which is probably closer to 17 or 18 inches, I would imagine. And the TPIS mini RAM, very similar to the 
later factory LT1 intake manifold. So common plenum, short runners, kind of like a shortened version of a tunnel ram, if you will. And you can see we had a dramatic difference. I'll go ahead and label these so you can see exactly which one of these is which. But you can see that the mini ram made quite a bit more peak power than our long runner tune port setup, even though it was ported. Peak power went from about 450 horsepower up to a little over 500, 502 horsepower. But as you can see, here's the pronounced effect of runner length. If we look at the power output, or more importantly, the torque output below 5,000 RPM, above that, the short runner manifold definitely made more power. But below that, we have a big change in torque production, and that's runner length. This is, this is not flow. In fact, we could get both of these systems to flow exactly the same. But that's not the change we're seeing here. The change here is the reflected wave that we're seeing, that which prov provides a supercharging effect based on runner length. So as we can see, the long runner length produced a lot more torque. In fact, in the 3,500 to 4,000 range, we're seeing a change going from 515 foot-pounds down to 432 foot-pounds. So you're seeing 70, 80 foot-pounds of torque change in favor of the long runner intake manifold. And it enjoyed that gain all the way up to 5,000 RPM. Now, if you're running it and you want to run this thing out to 6,500, then the short runner manifold, definitely the way to go. So this begs the question, which of these combinations would you pick? Do you want all of the high RPM power of the short runner manifold, or do you want all of the low speed torque so you could sit there and spin the tires forever of the long runner tune port setup. Now that we've taken a look at the two extremes, the tune port setup versus the short runner mini ram setup, let's take a look at something that's in between. And in this case, our in-between intake manifold configuration that I tested on this 383 was an Excel super ram. So it has runner length that's positioned exactly in between the long runner TPI setup and the short runner mini ram. And as you might be expecting, where do you think that the power curve is going to be compared to those two? It's going to make less torque than the long runner and more torque than the short runner. And that's exactly where it is. I'll go ahead and bring the mini ram up, mini ram combination up here in a second. But let's take a look at a comparison between the tune port setup and the Excel Super Ram. Well, and the Super Ram did exactly what we would expect it to do. Its shorter runner made less torque. In this case, the torque came down from 533 foot pounds down to 506 foot-pounds. And because it has shorter runner length, it also made more peak power. So peak power went up from 450 horsepower up to 479 horsepower. So exactly what we would expect. It made less torque and more power from the change in runner length. Now also there was a change in, not a big change in flow because we already had a ported lower manifold, but also a big change in plenum volume. I honestly don't think that the plenum volume had that much of an effect on power. I think that this is predominantly a change in runner length. And to, to illustrate this even further, let's take a look at see how these two compare to the very short runner mini ram. And what I'm going to do here is because this gets confusing because I have all of these as the same color and that's the only way I can do it. Unfortunately, my software does not allow me to change that. I'm gonna move myself. We have the torque curves here for three combinations. We have the tune port, the long runner. We have the super ram, the middle length runner. And then we have the mini ram, the short runner. And this is exactly what happens to the torque curves. And we see that long runner made the most peak torque, 533 foot pounds. The super ram made the next highest torque, 506 foot pounds. And then the short runner mini ram made 471 foot pounds. And not only did it make less peak torque, it also pushed where it made peak torque higher in the rev range compared to the other two long runner versions. And for the guys that are interested in the horsepower, let's switch over from torque to horsepower really quickly. We'll do that and I will move myself to get out of the way. And it did exactly what we expect. The short runner mini ram made the most horsepower. It made 502 horsepower. The medium runner length, Super Ram, made 479. And then the long runner tune port setup made 450 horsepower. But as always, the longer runners always make more power down low. The question isn't which one of these does this and how can I then tune for this? The question is, where do you want to make power? And for those that are interested, I ran a lot of other combinations here. I'll show just one more really quickly. 
This was a stealth ram and would have runner length between a super ram and a mini ram. And guess what happened? Yes, it has a power curve between the super ram and the mini ram because that what that's what the effect is of intake runner length. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, what's the takeaway in our very cool intake manifold runner test for our 3A3 tune port motor? Well, we learned the following thing. We actually learned the same thing that we already knew because it always works out like this. Running a long runner intake manifold makes more power down low. Running a short runner intake manifold makes more power up top. And by the way, this also works under boost. So it doesn't matter whether you're running a supercharger or a turbo. Choose the intake manifold to make power in the RPM range you plan to run. Armature older, make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. I'll keep testing.